Hi friends, uh, welcome to this channel. I discovered something on my laptop that I thought I could share with you all. So a couple of years ago, I was interviewing for a computational linguist position with Apple. It wasn't really intentional because I was actually looking for a web development role, but I ended up having around seven interviews for that position. And uh, these seven interviews were around uh, languages and linguistics. I eventually got the offer as a computational linguist slash web developer. Web development part is not relevant for this video. I'm just going to be speaking about my process of preparation for these linguistic interviews and in particular, I wanted to share a diagram that I created while preparing. I'm not going to be able to speak about the interview process itself, like the questions, you know, the details. I just want to share what I revised uh, in order to prepare myself. And I assure you, most of the things turned out to be super helpful, uh, both for the interview process and the job. So let's dive right into this together. So the whole diagram looks something like this. We've got this part that is just general linguistics right here and then it is more about phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. I tried to also get some more terminology like sub-disciplines, some key terms like phone, what's a consonant, a vowel, semi-vowel, place of articulation, manner of articulation, and uh, these different categories of sounds, and also what's prosody. Also, I just decided to save here the international phonetic alphabet, phonology with the definition, what's a phoneme, uh, what are allophones, I'd say uh, this uh, difference between phone and phoneme was super helpful both during the interviews and the job. Uh, some examples, also someone recommended to me to not only to revise on the terminology, but always to have examples in different languages. And uh, in that case, it was Russian and English. And that is because the position was for Russian voices of Siri. So that's why you can see some Russian words here with examples. Then what's the difference between phoneme and allophone? What's a minimal pair? What are allomorphs? Paronyms, homonyms, homophones. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly in English. I decided to write everything of this down mostly because I definitely needed to brush up, but also because I've never studied this in English. So when I had a screening call with an HR person, I was a little bit lost just because of the vocabulary. I could speak about this in French, I could speak about this in Russian, but not in English. So uh, even if you know all of these things, I still think it is useful to have like one source of truth, like this diagram, to have this all laid out, and especially if you need the vocabulary. Then we've got a little bit IPA information, which is also, I guess you can say, general linguistics. Here on this far up, it's uh, about the position, so it's the job description that I was provided with, and here some technical knowledge and mostly my personal experience, what I think could be useful for, for the job. So I had some of the examples right here. Well, uh, apparently I decided to stop here and didn't finish the diagram, but uh, I decided to learn more about speech recognition, about text-to-speech, uh, NLU, NLP, and these terms, I haven't finished this. Uh, and also other technical things that are more like regex, uh, which is super useful, was super useful on the job. It was also GitHub and how to use terminal, uh, but I only had regex kind of piece here in this diagram. So I just basically added some of the things that I knew just to remember what I did, how I used regex previously and how I used pandas and numpy libraries uh, for Python uh, to build a small movie uh, search engine. I was just playing around. So I include this just to have some examples. And the biggest part probably is the specificity of that role because it was about 
well the russian language so i had also to revise on different things that are not just general linguistics but more about russian language and processes in the language and what do we have here we have dialects we have sounds elephants and lexical stress okay let's see what we have in dialects so there are different dialects northern russian standard russian southern russian geography where do they speak it here we talk about each dialect more in detail okay so let's go to sounds then uh so the categorizations how many vowels uh in their positions if uh, you're from my french pronunciation channel then this sounds very familiar to you front central back close mid open uh, and then for diphthongs uh examples and uh how many consonants and a little bit more about uh these consonants how they are pronounced uh so screenshots from wikipedia well i guess this is where it stops being a diagram because it's just more it's just more like uh random uh pieces of information uh, a little bit about uh russian vowels here difficulty uh, what are some challenges? So as a linguist who was supposed to be working with Russian language, I was trying to define what could be some difficulties of, of the Russian language for a machine. So this is why I wrote down some, let's call them particularities of the Russian phonetics. And then we go into allophones and lexical stress. Some information in Russian here, the main allophone, distribution of phonemes. I also discovered that depending on the language you'll find a little bit different, like the information is going to be a little bit different on things. Uh, so I decided to include both in English and in Russian types of allophones and uh, how they are characterized also because i thought that it was going to be a challenge for a machine learning model and it actually was so i decided to dive a little bit deeper russian stress is not fixed meaning that it can fall on any syllable in a word and it can change it plays in a word with the same root or in a different form and uh, i researched it a little bit deeper and because i felt like it could be something useful because this could be a problem posed by the language. This is the approach that I took, researching both English and Russian uh, speaking resources. And actually when I was learning all of this, it made me realize that Russian is so hard. To sum it up a little bit, uh, I revised key terms in linguistics in general, so the bigger picture, and then I dove deeper into the field that I was interested about for uh, that particular role that was phonetics and phonology and again I revised uh, the terms the most important terms I came up with examples in multiple languages also I found it useful to dive deeper into the language that I was going to work with so uh, in this case Russian to recap like just general information, you know, how many sounds, uh, to write down some particularities or maybe things that could cause an issue for a machine learning model, to research it a little bit more, uh, to research geography, like uh, the dialects and the uh, history of the language. And also I revised some technical things like Python uh, regex. Uh, I took a course, I, well, in the diagram, you only saw my personal example of how I used it in web development, but I also took a course on Python regex just before the interviews because uh, Python regex was a part of a language interview. I hope it was useful to you. I didn't really prepare for this video. I just wanted to share it when I found it uh, right away. Uh, if you are an experienced linguist, then share your thoughts, maybe your experience. I'm not a linguist. Uh, I don't work as a linguist, but you can be helpful to someone who is looking for a linguistic role. Or if you are looking for your first computational linguist role, then just share your experience and uh, what does this process uh, look like for you and uh, what's your interviewing experience thank you for watching like this video if you liked it and consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one